In this video, I'm going to talk you through a few things that I wish I'd known about heat pumps and hot water storage in my house before I'd gone ahead and agreed on the design and the installation. Now, some mistakes were made, but it wasn't the end of the world. I'm going to walk you through some of my experience and some of the details so you can get a better understanding of what you need to know about hot water when it comes to heat pumps and how the heat pumps generate hot water so this first picture on the left hand side is my heat pump ready hot water cylinder so what's the difference between a normal hot water storage cylinder well basically the coil inside here that the uh, the heat that's coming from the heat pump it is just the larger area it's larger surface area so you don't have to run the flow temperature as hot which is more efficient for a heat pump so in theory you could connect a normal cylinder to a heat pump but it wouldn't be very efficient anyway the reason why this is wrong is this cylinder is too small for my house and for my family let me go through some of these slides with you so here you go on the left hand side i'm showing that um MCS has guidance of 45 litres, it comes from BS 6700, 6700, and so 45 litres is per person per day, sorry, and there's five of us in the household, so we should have 225 litres. Over here on the right hand side, this is directly copied from an MCS document, if you want to find it yourself, just Google MCS domestic hot water cylinder selection guide that's what this is called and you'll find a nice little pdf it talks you through and actually second page is really fascinating it's got the exact um, mathematical calculations of how you work out but these are just some rule of thumbs here if your heat pump is three to six kilowatt you're going to need a bigger cylinder because your heat pump will recharge that cylinder a lot slower if you've got a larger heat pump then you could get away with a smaller cylinder because your heat pump will be able to reheat the water so much quicker because it's got so much more output and a big heat pump and then you can see over on the left hand side here how many baths you've got for, so for us we've got one bath and one ensuite and we are a four to five bed so we should really have a 250 litre tank now those eagle eye people who really know what they're looking at will know that this is a 200 litre tank all of the valent ones they're the same uh, diameter but they're just uh, different heights so this is from the valent uh, technical data and this is where we have to do our research and this is where I fell down quite a lot um, I wasn't aware of this prior to having a heat pump installed and I wish I was because I would have pushed for us to have a 250 litre tank installed um, you can see that actually although these are labelled as 150 litre that's the smallest cylinder they do the actual volumetric capacity is 143 litres but 10 of those litres are in the coil so you've only got the hot water that's usable is 133 kil uh, litres 172 litres, 172.5 litres of hot water is what is actually accessible in our 200 litre tank. So not only are we already 25 litres short, then we add on the extra 27.5 litres. And before you know it, we are 52.5 um, litres short of where we should be with a hot water cylinder. Now, even if we had the 200, interesting that the 300 litre has less hot water capacity than the 250 i presume that's just because the 300 liter must have a huge coil and it must be a lot more efficient in reaching uh, the desired temperature to heat it up a larger coil is always going to mean a better coefficient of performance so anyway we have the wrong cylinder and really we should have the 250 liter but more on that in a bit um, here is something that I've learned a little bit. Obviously, the month of July isn't complete yet, so it's not a complete bar. Just ignore the orange lines and the blue lines and just look at the bars. The, this is the electrical consumption that has been used by the heat pump, specifically just for the domestic hot water. That's what that symbol up there means. So, so far in 2024, I've used 383.7 kilowatt hours just for 
generating the hot water for a family of five, which I actually think is amazing. Our domestic hot water coefficient of performance ranges between 3.4 and 3.6, and I'm very happy with that. I know that there are now these super cylinders from Heat Geek, and there were always some other cylinders that had bigger coils than the valent ones and were more efficient, but I'm very happy with actually how efficient it's been. Easily on par with gas boilers. Um, let's uh, just break down a couple of things here. I was always led to believe that as we go into the summer months, that's when you see your best cop from your heat pump. I'm actually seeing the opposite of that. So the the uh, range from January to June, including the unfinished month of July, the range of my cop for hot water is between 3.4 and 3.6. And most of the months are 3.6, a couple of months at 3.4. Um, now, what does that actually tell us? That um, although the warmer air outside does help us when it comes to um, air, air, heat pumps generating energy because it's starting from a warmer temperature, also, the other thing that is starting from a warmer temperature is your hot water cylinder. And so you're not actually heating up that bottom level, cooler part of water as much as you would do in the winter. I don't know if I'm explaining that clearly, but the most efficient part of the hot water cycle is the very beginning bit. Because at the beginning, your heat pump may be running at just a 20 degree flow temperature or a 30 degree flow temperature. And then as the temperature in the cylinder warms up, the temperature also in the heat pump has to ramp up to also work and, and keep building that temperature and that energy in the hot water cylinder. So as the the uh, flow the temperature in the cylinder increases, so will the flow temperature of the heat pump, which means the efficiency will decrease. And we know that the um, the range of the temperature of the water coming in between winter and summer in the UK, it can easily be a 10 plus degrees uh, range between those two temperatures. So um, anyway, I just thought that was interesting. Also, as a side note, um, I was also told that the coefficient of performance would be better in the warmer months and would bring up my scop. I'm actually finding the opposite really because I'm not heating the home at a low flow temperature. The heating is off completely. The only thing that my heat pump is doing is domestic hot water, which is a less efficient use of the heat pump. So my overall scop, when I combine both the heating and the hot water, is slowly being dragged down from over 4 to now down in 3.9, and it's slowly coming down as the year progresses. Anyway, um, so... What can you do about a small cylinder? If you find yourself in the same position as me and your hot water cylinder is too small, you've basically got three options. Number one, you put it on to constant reheat. What that means, though, is any time the cylinder drops below a certain temperature, the heat pump will switch the little diverter valve because the heat pump will only do your hot water cylinder or your heating, your home heating, at, at one at a time. It won't do both at the same time. So... You can have it set that any time that the cylinder drops below a certain temperature, the heat pump will kick in, it will reheat it 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and it will constantly keep it topped up. A very, very inefficient way to produce hot water with a heat pump because heat pumps like low flow temperatures. Number two is you can set two hot water cycles per day. Depends on the size of the cylinder and how much you're using, but once again, if you run two cycles per day, the cylinder most likely won't get down to a really, really cool temperature. And so you won't be getting the heat pump at its most efficient. Really, for the heat pump to be completely efficient, you want to you want to completely extract every bit of heat and hot water out of it and then reheat it. Not really practical for most people with most cylinders, but that would be the ultimate uh, way to be the, to 
do it most efficiently. And the third option is increase the storage temperature of the water. So we uh, store our hot water. W we wanted to aim for 45 degrees. We found that we couldn't run our domestic hot water at 45 degrees. There wasn't enough hot water, but two cycles per day in the summertime was too much. So I ramped up our hot water temperature to 48 degrees, and I found that is just the sweet spot. Of we've got just enough water water to see us through the day and we're just about making it through that won't be the case for the winter that's only the case for the summer because we require so much less hot water so yeah you will be um you will need to consider a few things efficiency which depending on what time of day can uh, equate to cost as well so for example two hot water cycles per day when i was doing that i was doing one at two i was doing the first cycle at 2 a.m in the morning on the agile tariff it's a very cheap rate and then the second cycle i was doing uh, just after midday where we always had enough solar to do another like kind of free recharge it's not really free because i could be exporting that for 15 pence per kilowatt hour to octopus but anyway um there's also then the factor of heating comfort so you yes constant reheat may sound great limitless supply of hot water and for some seasons that may be absolutely fine but then when it comes to the depths of winter where you really want to have your heat pump running all the time you don't want to you know run a tap for too long and you know be washing the dishes or anything else and all of a sudden your heating turns off for half an hour not not necessarily ideal but heat pumps do deal with that better than a boiler because they've built up so much thermal mass um anyway um i'm not going to waffle too much hopefully the last point here is stagnant water it's not just the most efficient way but it's also the best in terms of preventing bacterial growth like legionella to have a large turnover of water to really drain that cylinder you don't want to have any stagnant water in there um so what would i have done differently i would have spent less time fixating on the heating side of the heat pump because everyone scaremongers that you're going to be cold and it's not going to run efficiently on the heating and everything else. And I would have spent more of my time reading some of these MCS documents and reading some of the guides about the domestic hot water production. Um, why not just go for the largest cylinder you have space for? it comes back to the efficiency. You could put in a 300, I mean, some of the manufacturers make bigger than that, 350, 400 litre cylinders. But if you are not draining that to a considerable amount every single day, then you're leaving a lot of efficiency on the table. So really, you do want to have the um, the the perfect cylinder that will just cater for your hot water demands and that's a tricky thing to calculate and at the moment they're going by this rule of thumb of 45 liters per person per day there are other ways to calculate it and to get a more accurate reading but um there's also then the potential with you could have a very large cylinder but not necessarily reheat it every day if you've got enough temperature probes in there that you, enough temperature pockets and probes you could perhaps um, just set it on a hysteresis so that once it drops below a certain temperature you know that you've really drained the tank you know it's ready for a reheat and maybe you get away with reheating it once every two days or once every three days so yeah swings and roundabouts um, domestic hot water is a small part of the overall energy consumption but it may be the most critical for a comfortable lifestyle i don't know i'll put that out to you in the comments what do you think is um, more critical on this question of what would I have done differently, I am in talks with my installer, uh, have been in some quite lengthy talks about installing a larger cylinder. Um, I feel ultimately it was their mistake. Uh, I, a homeowner should not be expected to know what their hot water demand should be but ultimately we were a four bedroom house with a family of five two bathrooms our ensuite has a you know rainfall head shower and although I've dialed back all of the flow rates as much as I can to try and prolong the water occasionally we do run dry um, that's all for this video I hope this has been helpful and I hope if you're on your journey of investigating heat pumps um, 
this hasn't been the end of the world or a deal breaker for us. I've just had to be very involved in managing the situation. And um, <clears throat> ultimately, I'd love a larger hot water cylinder, but I have offered to be pragmatic. And I appreciate if we go back to the first picture, if you're an installer, you'll know how much of a hassle it is to work in a tiny cupboard like this, where there's very small tolerances, the door and the alarm system and everything had to come out to slide that cylinder in. And uh, there's a buffer tank and uh, expansion vessels and stuff that have gone in since that cylinder went in. It would make it a very difficult uh, process to remove that and fit another tank. So I have offered that they just give me a refund on part of the price and we just call it even and I just get used to the fact that in the winter we have to reheat the cylinder two cycles a day and you, we just live with it. I guess it's one of those pragmatic things but I hope by making this video I can help you to maybe uh, avoid the um, avoid the mistake that was made by me and the installers and like I said if you want to read more you can look at some of the manufacturers um, information uh, for example I have the uh, owner's manual and installation details for the valent unistore heat pumps um, in PDF and the domestic hot water cylinder selection guide from MCS as well and there's great bit of information there but this video has gone way too long so I'm going to press stop recording and I'm going to put this on YouTube all in one take and no cuts goodbye